Welcome back to part two of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way, featuring our special guests. Now let's dive right back into the conversation and continue exploring their incredible journey. I don't want anybody starving or feeling like they're starving or they can't, <laughs> they can't cope. Sure. Um, but you've got to, again, go back to the cave people. They didn't have three square meals a day. They didn't, they didn't wake up and eat straight away. They woke up and had to go foraging for it. So, mm -hmm. you know, they were able to fast for longer. Yeah. And then the three is to not eat three hours before bed because you want yes. your digestion done before you go to bed and um, so that your body can, can go straight into deep sleep and do all the repair work that it needs to do and it's not still working on digesting um, everything you've just eaten. Phew, that's the whole diet. <laughs> no, that's amazing because I, I can't, I suppose, I, you know what, I live by that without even realising it was after that i mean again i break the rules occasionally here and there um but i try not to eat three hours before bed um mm. but i also on an extra layer to that i try not eat in the dark as well mm. yeah because what i was reading was uh, in simple terms obviously you when you eat you your glucose level goes up mm. and you don't want your glucose to clash with your melatonin mm. You, your, your Dracula hormone when it naturally starts to go dark, your melatonin starts to release and you don't want those to collide. And that's, that can help, that helps, uh, sorry, that prevents again, what you just said, going into deep sleep and doing what it needs to be done. Yeah. Um, fascinating. Yeah. I love it. I'm doing the right thing. I just got some free yeah. advice. <laughs> well, not even advice. You're already doing it. Just got some free comfort. <laughs> yeah. I suppose so. Yeah. Um, so you did you, so you did that particular diet yourself when yes. you, yeah. So, because I remember on our pre-chat, I'm going off. I'm going off on a different. We we want we want to bring it back more to you. Um, <laughs> there was there was a reason. There was a point when in time did it co-align with your mother? Because you started to realise that you had something very similar. Can, can we talk about that at this point then? Where because you, you have the gene as well, don't you? APO. Oh, actually, I don't. I'm very lucky. Uh, oh, my sorry. mom, yeah, my mom has APOE three and four, so only one copy of the APOE four gene, and she didn't give it to me. So I, I'm just three three. So that's great. But there are some genes. I know what you're referring to. There are some genes that um, don't help um, that mom has got, and that she has passed on to me. So there's one specific one, which is the MTHFR gene. Well, wow, talk about it every day. Mom. Yeah, <laughs> the MTHFR gene which means that um, she and I don't process B vitamins very well. So I can eat as many brassicas as I like, but there's going to be a limit to how much um, my body can process. And my mom has two copies of it, so she can't process at all. Um, mm -hmm. So I do eat a lot of brassicas because uh, they're really important for brain health and lots of other things as well. Um, but I also take um, some supplements as well, some pre-methylated B vitamins as well, just to make sure. And I can tell the difference. I can yeah. absolutely tell the difference. I feel better on them. Um, and I had a little break from, um, uh, I was I was eating lots of brassicas and taking some methyl support. And I had a little break from that. And my nails were just ruined, really ridgy and really flaky and really bad. <laughs> um, Grow really quick, don't they? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, my, my nails go so quick, way <laughs> faster than they used to. Sorry, and now, and now they're great again. Now I've got some really good nails again. <laughs> so I, I can I can use that as like the barometer <laughs> to yeah. see if things are working okay. Yeah. It's like you're in my head because um, <laughs> I don't say it out loud to everybody else, but <laughs> I am now. When I notice my nails going really quick after I've cut them and then they're back long within days again, mm. I go, I've just, I know I'm doing something right, yeah. if that makes sense. And, and going back to MTHFR, that is, um, I believe, I'm not a medical expert, but I can only go off what, I read uh, and my research that MTHFR is probably the most, it's the most common gene mutation of the methylation process, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I've got a few methylation process SNPs, actually. SNPs are just um, what we call a version. It's not a mutation. It's a oh, okay. natural thing. Yeah. Um, it's it's just a certain variation. Variation, so I've got quite yeah. a few of those around methylation. So that's why I need to give myself so much support. Um and it's particularly good. I mean, it's good for everything. And we need our B vitamins for all sorts of processes in our body. Mm. But one of the things it helps us do, um, when we eat protein, any kind of protein, it's not just animal protein, just any kind of protein that we eat, that we need, there's a, a little side effect, a little byproduct that um, 
comes out from that called homocysteine, which is really inflammatory. Yes. Um, and if you're processing your B vitamins, you will just clear that homocysteine straight away. It will not be a problem. Um, but for people with this, this, these SNPs, and they are really common, um, yeah. then um, the homocysteine can build up and that just builds up inflammation. And if you've got inflammation in your body, you're going to have inflammation in your brain. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's a really common thing to, I, th- I mean, when I think about it, I can't think that I've got a client who doesn't have those SNPs. So something to look out for. So for all the listeners, make sure you eat lots of lovely greens, lots of B vitamins um, uh, all the time. (laughs) Yeah, so because um, homocysteine is an inflammatory amino acid, isn't it? Mm. Is that right? Uh, is it uh, an amino acid? Is it? I have no idea. I would need to look that up again. That's that's gone. <laughs> yeah, no, I read. I read it was a, an extremely of. Um, infla- um, um, it is inflammatory. Yeah, inflammatory. Um, that's the word I was looking for. Inflammatory yeah. amino acid. And mm-hmm. what we want to do is w- what we want to get from the greeny leaves from the methylfolate is to convert into. Is it methionine? Is it the next stage? Oh, of- you're testing my chemical knowledge. You are so up on this stuff. <laughs> a little bit. No, a little bit because. <laughs> I think methionine has a compound in it called SAM-E, which is responsible for mood, which keeps the mind a little bit calmer. And Mm -hmm. I see that in uh, where obviously I work in education. So I see a lot of children who, you know, even just come up to me and say, I have ADHD. And -hmm. these children know that they've got ADHD. So it's becoming, I feel like it's becoming an issue and being identified. Not that there's anything wrong with ADHD, uh, but understanding the body deep down. They're coming and going, well, I need to be treated differently because I've got ADHD and I, don't, I struggle with that. And, um, yeah. and I, and I, and then I see that I see everybody's lunch boxes and I just, mm. it, it screams out at me. You know, it pops out like it's, I don't know how to explain. It just pops out. It's crystal no. clear to me. And, um, you just see all the sugar on the foods and we don't teach it anywhere. I go in all the schools. We don't teach this at one class on one day at one school that I went to did. And I loved it. I mean, they didn't, they were talking about categories of food, but obviously I started to take it deeper yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's not part of the curriculum here, um, but I think it should be. And I think we should be talking about sleep at a deeper level. I think we should be talking about the brain at a deeper level yeah. and food. Uh, but I know it's quite a powerful industry, the food. So we've got to, as I think I've, I, I interviewed a neurologist and she said, you know, there's people, um, you know, get into trouble sometimes uh, yeah. in, in talking about food uh, in the, um, you know, against food companies and whatnot. Mm. I don't know if that's right. And I obviously don't want to get any threats <laughs> coming my way. Uh, no, but I just think, it... yeah, we'll leave that one. Yeah. Um, it's it's a weird subject, isn't it? But I do, that's what we refer to as um, homocysteine levels rise. So our minds race. Mm. Um, and then we want, and people think it's the brain that's racing, but it's not, is it? The brain is a noun and the mind is a verb. We've got to look at it as a verb, not a noun that we do memory. We do mind. We can, mm untrain it or we can train it and i think we don't look at the brain because it's something that we can't see Mm. um we go to the gym we can see our arms improving if you lift weights you can physically see it so you get something from it but people don't look at that because they can't see it is that how you feel and is that what you generally see on a daily basis before these clients come to see you yeah absolutely i mean I have lots of clients who come to me who say, oh, don't worry, I eat really healthily. And then <laughs> when you actually explore what they're eating, they eat what they've been told is healthy, but it's sugar laden. Yeah. Um, and I just yeah. want to go back to your kids with ADHD. I don't, I don't really want to focus on ADHD, but what you were talking about there really triggers in me just how many conditions so many people have these days. Now, there's got to be there's got to be a reason for that change. When I was a kid, I didn't know any kids with ADHD. I don't even think I knew what it was. Mm. Um, but I didn't know any kids with asthma either. Um, and I have a memory from I can't I can't actually remember exactly what age I was, but I would have been about 10, 11, 12. I watched a program on the telly about cancer, and they said in that show, and it really scared me and stayed with me. They said, in your lifetime, you will know somebody who gets cancer. So, I mean, that was many years ago. (laughs) That was like Mm. 40 years ago. Um, And only a few years ago, I was watching a programme on telly, like a Stand Up to Cancer charity programme, and they were talking about one in three people will get cancer. And now it's one in two. 
So I don't want to labour any particular condition, but if you think about all of the chronic conditions we're now experiencing and how much they're growing, you know, people my age have a one in 10 chance of getting um, Alzheimer's. People born today have a one in three chance. So what is it that's changing over that sort of 40 years that I'm talking about? Well, it's the stuff they're putting in our food. Mm. It's the mix of food that we're getting. You know, when I was a kid, my dad used to grow um, veggies in his garden. And that's what we ate. <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, you know, I mean, we didn't have a freezer. I, I, the, I, the freezers weren't invented when I was a kid. I remember freezers when they when we first got a freezer. That must have been sort of mid seventies, and our diet went right downhill. <laughs> you know, we we suddenly started getting like Finch's crispy pancakes or whatever. Um, you know, but prior to that, we had a pretty much a meat and two veg style diet. We we ate and we ate homegrown with no pesticides, yeah, um, and no chemical fertilizers. You know. I mean, I know there's other things going on as well. It's not just our food. Obviously, it's in the air. There is so much more traffic yeah. these days, so we're breathing more stuff in from that. Um, cleaning products are really, you know, horrible chemical cleaning products now, which were probably mm. minimal when I was a kid. There's lots of things that have changed, but it's just strikingly obvious to me that all the increase in all these chronic conditions has got to be related to that. What, what else do you know that has changed in that time frame? I know. I, I say the same thing, but I feel like I'm one of the old, like, granddads when I talk about it. You know what I mean? And I never used to look at it like this because I was the one who was eating chocolate and crisps. You ask any of my friends, I was known for my micro nuggets every night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we catered to salad cream before going to bed. You know, I look back and go, oh, my God, what was I doing? I, I, I do believe I was pre-diabetic. I can't prove it. I never got the test, but I had my gallbladder out too and – yeah, I knew my gallbladder out March 22 and um, I was nearly in a coma because sepsis is set in. And that's why wow. I changed my journey into yeah. this, yeah. Um, not only just researching the brain and the body and um, but doing the podcast and wanting to share people's stories. Um, but, yeah, that's the reason why I changed and did all of this, because I thought I can't. I've had an organ removed. Mm. Nobody should have an organ removed if you think about it luckily it's an organ i think i could probably survive without luckily but the process was scary because we got told i was 20 minutes away from being a coma because of the sepsis and um there was another part that had gone into a particular tunnel i can't remember what it was called and a specialist here in australia would have to be flown in to do that part of the operation but luckily when i had the scan the morning afterwards um it had either gone back or was never there but nevertheless the gallbladder was completely destroyed I ate good food. Mm -hmm. I did. I really did. Moving to Australia, I've eaten pretty well since mm -hmm. arriving here. However, going through that stages, and this is where it connects with, I know we're going to talk about some of your leadership stuff that you did, but I went through some toxic environments, mm -hmm. being bullied in the workplace and um, a, long, a long time ago, but it's always sat with me. And um, I do believe chronic stress is set in. Mm -hmm. um, and we all know chronic stress can obviously affect organs. Mm. and um i was in a dark space so what was i doing at night eating chocolate eating packet of crisps mm. drinking coca-cola because mm. it was the pleasure i was getting from it um obviously not understanding the dark spaces but my body was probably going into mm. and that's probably where the gallbladder came so there's you know i don't really i don't drink so i can't blame it on the alcohol um even when i was going through the dark spaces i wasn't drinking um thank god because i could have gone into a whole new rabbit hole there mm. but I do believe it was a message to say, got to change everything. And, um, yeah. you know, I, I, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die quick when I'm 80, opposed to being kept on medicine for the last 10 years of my life. Yeah. You know, I'm with you there. <laughs> That's what I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to 94, I think. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's whatever age, right? If I'm destined to die at 60, I don't want to be getting ill at 50. No. And, right. You know, if I'm destined to die at hundred, uh, I don't want to be on my pills from, from 90. Um, we could go in any direction here and um, we've kind of gone away from you. Um, the pivotal part in your life then, where did it all change for you before you began leading your own way in the way you are today, would you say? Mm. So, 
I'm going to have to say it all hinges back to something that happened when I was a kid. Okay. And I've only really put that together in my mind mm. in recent times. Um, when I was um, in middle school, for the last probably the last year of middle school, I was bullied by this girl. Not physical. Yeah. Um, but just lots of name calling, lots of constant just digging, digging, digging. Oh, God, it's awful. Um. And I was always worried it was going to end up being violent. And I just like spent my entire year kind of trying to avoid her, trying to keep away from her. Um, and it, it was quite a horrible time. Um, and then in the summer holidays, that it was all over. Obviously, I was going to be moving to a new school in the autumn. And I had a lovely summer. And I didn't realise this same girl was going to go to the same school. Um, and I turned up at my new senior school and there she was. And something just snapped in me and I just thought, I'm not standing for it. And she came up fairly quickly. I mean, it was like the first few days of being at school. She came up and um, I decked her. <laughs> I just thought, I'm not taking this any longer. And I'm not advocating violence. <laughs> I, w I was going to say I'm a teacher, so I can't condone that type of behaviour. But, Lizzie. <laughs> but um, I d it just had a massive um, change of mindset, of personality, of everything. I mean, I've been a really... I've been a goody two shoes girly swat <laughs> up until that point, you know. A swat um, for everybody in Australia, it means a bit of a geek. Right? Yes. <laughs> I, I loved school, loved all my lessons, etc. That's that's who I was. Yeah. Um but I was really introverted and really quiet. Um and in that moment, um everything changed. I mean, in my in my leadership development career. I've done lots of work around psychometrics and I can totally recognise that I was an introvert in those days. And just that moment of standing up for myself, um, everything changed. I mean, she never came after me again, so um, I don't know what would have happened if if she'd been unrelenting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, everything changed. My personality changed. I became much more outgoing. Um, I test now completely as an extrovert um, on psychometrics. So... Um, I can kind of pin down that was when that changed. And it's interesting because I think about my actual career, I had so many jobs. I moved jobs so often and it was always that I just really wasn't getting on with the boss. I, I feel like I was micromanaged by every boss I had mm. until, um, I, uh, until mm, late 90s, early 2000s. I got a really good job with a really great boss. Um, but prior to that, I'd been, you know, micromanaged. I would work somewhere for a year, maximum three years, and then I'd move on um, just because, you know, I, I didn't respond well to being managed that way. Mm. And then, as I say, um, late 90s, I got I got a great job with a great boss and I realised what, what it should actually be like. Um, and I really enjoyed that that job and I stayed quite a while, but then eventually the, the company failed. Um, and that was the point where I decided I really needed to work for myself yeah. um, to make the atmosphere around me um, what I wanted <laughs> um, and to treat my clients. And, and you know, because it, I, I started a training business, uh, executive uh, coaching, uh, leadership development, team coaching type business. Um, I wanted to help other people to enjoy their work, to have great teams, to treat each other with respect and to yeah. have a really good work experience. Um, so, yeah, I've come a long way around that, <laughs> yeah. right back to my childhood. But, um, but that's, that's, that's how I decided to, um, how I came to be leading my way and, and what led to that. I feel like... I, I feel like we live a very similar life because I, I have been bullied as an adult, but I did get bullied as a child. Um, I was scared to go to school every day. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.